Good morning, guys, and we are here with the first vendor today, and it's going to be Metal Cloak. Now, as you know from some of my other videos, I run Metal Cloak control arms and their bumper, and I'm really excited about the rest of their stuff they got coming forward for the Bronco. We have Mattson here from Metal Cloak, and he's going to explain to us a little bit of how they got started with the Bronco and what they got coming. So, listen to this, guys. So, yeah, uh, Mattson, can you tell me what you guys, uh, how you got started with the Bronco and what you got going on? So, you know, uh, we've been playing this game with the Jeeps since 2009. Uh, when we opened our doors January 5th, 2009, had three products for the TJ. Now we're at 1,400 products that ranges from CJs all the way up to the JTs. And we're just in love with the idea of off-roading. I mean, I, listen, it's, it's, I can be out there on a Tuesday out at the Rubicon Trail and oh, yeah. call it work, right? So when the Bronco came out, there was a lot of excitement to this new technology. And I have to say, there's a few guys in our shop, including our plant manager, who have early Bronco old school so we have some bronco love within our within our, our organization and so when the new bronco came out it was just obvious that we need to dive into it we need to find out about it so we ordered this as soon as we could you know we even even before we got delivery of this we were finding out friends who had broncos and said bring it in we need to do r d we need to start that process we need to check things out so it really has been a labor of love and learning about it learning about it from the community but just like we do with the jeeps the community can teach us more than we can just simply do an R&D, right? What you're discovering about the Bronco, what its weaknesses are, what its strengths are, what we can do with it, what needs to be done and needs to be made better. We start doing that with our own rig. Like you can see down here, we have uh, new tie rods that we were developing, upper A-arms for more clearance, so you can clear that larger shock tower. Uh, we have our, bump, our bumper system, which is kind of interesting. When we did the Bronco, we had kind of a model for our early bumpers and, and let's be frank when we started doing our TJ bumpers it was about simplicity and cost savings for you and as well as for us and how we manufactured it right because when we did our TJ we didn't do anything in-house everything was outsourced so all our decisions we made but how we design things and how we put things together everything except for the welding was done by other shops we had a little 2,000 square foot facility now we're into the Bronco it's almost like we're a different company we're a little bit bigger we have 70,000 square feet we do almost everything in-house and so we're able to design things a little bit differently and go from a different angle, which we really did with that front bumper. We had a vision that we wanted stuff that was more pre-runner style, still had the modularity that people look at us and are known for based on our styles and what we do, but we wanted something more pre-runner style. So this is the first ever bumper that was built from the ground. Let's, uh, let's show you guys real quick. Let's flip that camera around. So this is the first bumper we ever built from the ground up platform specific that didn't have any parameters uh, uh, tied to it. We didn't look at it and say, you know, we've got to try to use some of the other components that we've already built within the Jeep. Like we have the JK crosses over to the JL to the JT. Let's do something from the ground up. And I think we did a great job with this design. It's a beautiful bumper. It has multiple skid plate options. You can use steel or aluminum. It has plenty of airflow occurring from the sides. We brought the winch down as low as possible to make room for the camera. It is kind of funny though, I will say, when you're in backup mode and you see that 360 view on your, on your Bronco, all of a sudden this winch looks like this giant front end piece because of just the camera is catching just enough of it to explode it out. But we've got as much backflow uh, airflow as we can. If you have the ACC, we're prototyping where that's gonna go. That'll go right above the C there. Uh, but it's just a beautiful bumper using Baja design lights and uh, great strong recovery points. We're really we're proud of this particular design because again, first thing we've ever done from the ground up. But that's what's fun about this rig is tackling something new that other people are all doing at the same time. And that, it's interesting because there's a lot of people tackling the Bronco, right? A lot of companies, many companies that are Ford specific. They've been doing Ford forever. We're in the Jeep world and we jump across to the Ford and the Bronco, we benefited from the fact that there were a lot of Jeep owners who know Metal Cloak who jumped over to the Bronco and they want Metal Cloak products like Metal Cloak control arms like you're running. The Metal Cloak control arms, Metal Cloak uh, uh, track bar in the rear. We have our new prototype A-arms, uh, which are of course are gold because that is our signature for everything. Gold skid plates. And you know the first product we came out with, which was the easiest thing to accomplish, was our full skid plate system. So if you look underneath, you can see the full undercloak skid plates that cover up every little aspect of it, multiple pieces, makes it easy to oil change by simply removing one plate that has five bolts. Take that out, you can do the oil change. 
And we even have another version of the gas tank skid coming out that is simply going to be just the gas tank skid for the guys that need to replace that because when you get that base model, that doesn't even have a gas tank skid, right? Our rocker rail system designed to give you a little extra step is enough of a space there that you can actually step up into it, but also protect you when you are out there hitting the Rubicon Trail or some other fun trail that might have a rock or two that you have to go around. Our rear bumper system, again, following that same design, that same pre-runner style with a combination of tube and sheet. And while we haven't chopped this off, I mean, it is one of those interesting things that Ford decided to do was put so much protection down here for the trailer system, for the plugs. We moved that up, but you can chop this if you want to. We haven't done that yet. You can chop it out or you can leave it down there and just use that system. And we, if you want to leave your plugs down below, we do have a little cover that goes into that plate. Recovery points, of course. Now you don't see it on here, but try to imagine a sport gate style, what we call our sport gate tail. And it's a, it's a tire carrier system that will go right through here, shows off your logo, which is important. But this was supposed to be on the rig today, didn't get on the rig today mainly because our prototypes got sent out to the Jason Shear KOH build. So if you know about the KOH edition that Jason Shear has been involved in, they're using our underclope skid plate systems and they're now using our sport gate tire carrier, our, our tailgate mounted tire carrier system. We built it in collaboration with them, which is the first time we've actually designed something in collaboration with another group. And we're, we're, it's beautiful. It's, it's made of aluminum, a combination of aluminum, steel, steel mainly for the tire carrier portion itself aluminum for the base plate for the strength against that, uh, against that tailgate. They wanted aluminum for obviously for weight savings. Um, and of course we have our uh, license plate relocation bracket, which does have your third brake light if you wanted to eliminate this and just use that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you off real uh -oh. quick. I, want, I, want, I wanted to say something. I just noticed this real quick. If you look at the license plate, now don't go to DMV and try and, try and find the license plate, but it says zip. If you look at my Bronco over there, mine says zap. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So awesome. sorry to cut you off, but that, that was kind of funny there. And guys, I'm running their rear bumper and their control arms. I just did 2,500 miles to Moab and back, four days straight of off-roading, smacked around a lot. It did phenomenally. Anyway, back to you, Matt. Yeah, well, thank you. you yeah, it's, I, I love talking about our stuff, but it's always better when somebody else is talking about our stuff because you have the experience and out there and using it. And let me ask you this. So you're out there wheeling and you're taking your rig out. Like, what's the best place you've taken your rig so far? I wish I could say the Rubicon, but the snow's still there. But we're going to the Rubicon this year a few times. The best place I've done, the most technical would be Poison Spider. Nice. Uh, but I've done Deer Valley, Poison Spider, Fins of Things. Uh, just tons of off-roading in Moab for four days. And then around here, I've hit almost every trail with the exception of Slick Rock and the Rubicon and Ford Ice. Those are the three I'm trying to hit this year. What's the biggest challenge you found in the Bronco? Because you're a Jeep guy as well. You've yep. done the Jeeping thing. You've done the solid axle thing. What are the, what's the biggest challenge you find in, in using a Bronco? It's going to be learning how to use the IFS versus a solid axle. I love solid axles. I have a confession for you guys. I love Jeeps. I love solid axle rigs on the Rubicon. It's my go-to every time I go. IFS is different. You do the Bronco wave a lot. You like, But I, it's friendly. The Bronco likes to talk to people. But learning how to choose different lines based on IFS versus solid axle. Now, you can get into a whole debate about tie rods and control arms and all this stuff, but I will say this, I have taken the Bronco, with the exception of the Rubicon, which is happening, I've taken the Bronco everywhere I've taken my XJ, which is on a long arm kit, and even though it does a Bronco wave, it still gets through the same trails, same obstacles. Well, you know, you call it the Bronco wave, but a long, one time it was the Jeep wave. Every rig out there, you know, it took a long time, a long development, and Metal Click was part of that development in creating suspension systems that can get the most flex. We like to consider ourselves to be the flex company, which is why we have a trailer that goes around the country yep. testing people's flexes. 
and we use all that data that we learn to be able to make it better. So it's with the Bronco world, the Bronco, the 6G, yeah, there's not a lot of flex out of it and just the way it's currently set up. But we're gathering that data as we test them across the country because they're everywhere. They're at Jeep Beach, they're at Jeep Jam this weekend, which is going on right now in Panama City, and our CTI trailer is there gathering that data. So over time, we're hoping we can learn more and more so we do have the most flex. We can turn this rig, instead of having to do a full-on axle swap, what can we do to garner more flex, to make the system work better, so that when you're out there, you're not doing the Bronco wave, and those little, what seems sometimes to be that inconvenient moment, right? Like, it's already a little bit off kilter, or you're already a little bit uh, feeling a little pucker factor because you're a little off camber, but all of a sudden you get a little wave out there and you go, whoa, Nelly, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> yep. So we're working on that, and hopefully over time our engineers will figure it out. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, and I appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have coming for the Bronco. Thanks for talking to me. Right, my pleasure.